Graph the following using a table of values. Use the vertex and the value of A to create a pattern for graphing the remaining points needed to complete a parabola. A is the coefficient of x squared, and since we will be using A to create a pattern, let's first identify what A is in our parent graph. A is the coefficient of x squared, so A is 1. If I plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for y equals x squared, I get negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. In this example, our vertex is 0, 0, so let's focus on these four points around the vertex when we move one unit horizontally away from the vertex, so one unit to the right or one unit to the left, how much does the y value change? The y value goes up one. The y value rises one unit. When we move two units away from the vertex, the y value changes or moves up four units. Now I could plug in a table of values or I could recognize that this is just a reflection over the x-axis. And that's because a is negative one. So I'm gonna take all the points that I did in the parent graph and reflect them over the x-axis. That means my vertex will remain at 0, 0, and the rest of the points will be as follows. Moving one unit away from the vertex horizontally, either to the left or the right, the change in y is now down one unit, so negative one. When you move two units to the left or the right from the vertex, the change in y is now down four or negative four. In our third example, a, the coefficient of x squared, is two. Our vertex is still zero, zero. Now let's plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two to get our points. Let's look at our pattern. One unit to the left and one unit to the right. The y value has now changed by two units. The y value rises two units. Now going back to the vertex, two units to the right of the vertex, or two units to the left of the vertex, the y unit rises eight units. And for the fourth example, a is one half. Our vertex is still zero, zero, and now plug in negative two, negative one, one and two to get the remaining four points. Now one unit away from the vertex, the y value rises only half a unit. And two units away from the vertex, the y rises two units. The rise is only equal to the y value when your vertex is zero, zero. So let's see if we can create a pattern. How is A related to the rise? When moving horizontally one unit away from the vertex, the rise is going to be equal to A. But when moving two units away from the vertex, what kind of pattern do you see with A? Each one of these is multiplying A by four. So no matter what your vertex is, when you're one unit away from the vertex, you will rise A units. If A is negative, the rise will be downward. And when you're two units away from the vertex, you will rise four times A units. This can save us a lot of time from having to plug in a table of values by noticing the pattern given to us by A, our vertical stretch or shrink. Graphing quadratic functions in vertex form looks a lot like absolute value, just with parentheses and a squared. Your vertical stretch, shrink, or reflection over the x-axis is determined by a, the sign of a, or if it's greater than or less than one. Your horizontal shift is determined by what is being subtracted from x. Your vertical shift is determined by what is being added to the overall function. Let's practice using the pattern of a and 4a to graph these remaining. First, determine the vertex. That would be three, negative two and plot that point. Now determine the rise by identifying a. a in this case is equal to two. So our first rise is two and our second is four times two, eight. One unit to the right and then we rise two units. 
Parabolas always have symmetry about the vertex, so one unit to the left, we will rise two units. Two units to the right. From there, we'll rise eight units. And to maintain symmetry, two units to the left of the vertex, and then rise eight. There's our parabola. The domain of every single parabola is negative infinity to infinity because you're allowed to square any real number. The y values, however, negative three is not a part of the range, negative four, negative five, negative six, all these values are not part of the range. So we have a lowest y value, which is the y value of the vertex, negative two, up to the highest y value, which is positive infinity. For number three, h is going to be negative 4 and k is negative 1. Identify a to determine your rise. a is equal to negative 1. So the rise one unit away from the vertex will be a and two units will be 4a, negative 4. Graph your vertex and then graph your four remaining points using a. One unit to the left of the vertex and then we will rise negative one unit. So you'll go down one. Same for the right side, right one unit, down one. Two units to the right of the vertex will go down four. And two units to the left will go down four again. Domain is negative infinity to infinity, but now that we have a downward facing parabola, our range will begin with the least value, which is forever and ever and ever, toward negative, so negative infinity, and then we'll end with the maximum value, which is k, the y value of the vertex, negative one. So domain and range for parabolas is just like domain and range for linear absolute value graphs from section 1.2. For number four, determine your vertex and your rise. And now let's graph it. Graph the vertex at negative four, one. Keep in mind that even though the rise is a fraction, this is not slope. This is not a rise over run situation. We are literally running only one unit and then here we're running two units away from the vertex. So the rise is only the change in y. Moving one unit to the left of the vertex, I will rise negative one half or go down one half. One unit to the right, I'll rise one half a unit, so down one half. Moving two units away from the vertex to the left, our rise will be down two. Two units to the right of the vertex, and again we go down two. As always, domain is negative infinity to infinity. This is a downward opening parabola, so we start with negative infinity and go up to the k, the y value of the vertex. Press pause and try number five on your own. Then press play when you're ready to check your work. And there's our answer. Being able to move one unit to the left or right and rising A, or two units to the left or right of the vertex and rising 4A, can make graphing a parabola significantly more efficient. But you can always go back to a table of values if you get confused to check.